All right guys, so today we're gonna install the coolant overflow uh, tank that I've come up with. So this is just a normal water bottle. Uh, this is not a double walled bottle. So you don't want it to retain heat, you want it to actually expand, or rather release heat. So it's just a bottle. Um, the reason I picked it is I like the size, but also this the hole happens to fit the um, what is this? The uh, 7 16 uh, size hose, uh, hope just right into it. I have some hosing here. It's um, uh, what's the size? It is 5 16 on the inside and 7 16 on the outside, which matches the old hose that used to be there, which we're gonna connect right here. Um, I have a uh, bottle holder uh, for a frame. Uh, I also have a little piece of rubber that we're going to put in the clamp so that we don't damage the um, frame here. Uh, some zip ties and of course coolant. Um, the idea is that this thing will be mounted right here. Um, have the bottle sitting in it and the holes run down to it. And then fill everything up and we should be good. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is I put some uh, coolant inside the bottle, uh, and then we're gonna attach it to the um, bottle holder such that it won't move. So just putting it in, like that would obviously still allow it to fly out of there. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the zip ties to tie it in place. And to do that, we're gonna essentially, have the zip ties go through the frame itself. Now I'm going to pop that over right here in between the bottle cap and the uh, um, little flippy flop thing at the top. So, and then we're just going to tighten them out as tight as possible. That way, even if it tries to go up, it can't. It's kept in place. Okay. Alright, that's pretty stable. Not going anywhere. We're gonna click these. Just so we don't need them. Next, well, we're going to um, attach the bottle to the frame and then measure out how much hose we need and plumb it and essentially set it up. So let's attack, get this guy attached to the frame. So in order to attach it to the frame, we're going to use the clamp that came with it and we're going to use this extra rubber piece to protect the frame from the plastic also to get it to not slide around. Okay, so that's roughly where we want it. We'll turn it forward a little bit. And this thing cracked. So that was kind of the reviews that I had online. But this is absolute trash and it will break. So that doesn't work. Okay, so after the uh, back bracket over here broke, uh, I took some of these hose clamps and I've fished them through uh, between the bottle and the frame. And I'm gonna use uh, these rubber pieces to essentially put them on the inside and Tighten them right around the uh, frame itself. That should prove for a much better attachment, get this thing solid in place. Uh, and then we just put the hose into it. Uh, and uh, we can fill it up and start the bike up. So uh, let's get that attached. 
uh, and uh, go from there. Okay, so here we go. Things are set up. The frame doesn't move. Bottle's in place. Hose is in place. I already have some fluid in it uh, to make sure that uh, when it does overflow, there's room for it to expand, but then when it does suck back in, it actually has fluid to suck all the way back in and not suck air back in. Um, and yeah, so now before I start, before I fill it up, I'm gonna start the bike, get it to warm up, uh, just so we can get the heat lamp to pop up on the gauge. Uh, then we're gonna turn it off, fill it up, uh, start it up again, and we should hopefully see that heat lamp not come up, and the bike should be running uh, and cooling, and we can actually let it heat up and warm up uh, completely for the first time. So uh, let's get it started and uh, partially warmed up first. Okay, so we have the heat lamp on. So now we're gonna kill the bike. Let's fill it up with coolant, start it back up, and uh, see if that light no longer is there. And actually the bike gets starts to get cooled. And then we can let it warm up fully, uh, and uh, we'll do a little test right afterwards. So let's fill it up. Okay, so a uh, few things. First, the fuel, the coolant system is filled. Uh, it's cooling. Uh, now the light is still on. I realized that that light is triggered by any resistance below 160 ohms. And right now the bike wiring and temperature sensor uh, indicate anything above 60 Celsius is uh, 140 ohms or lower. When the bike gets to like really hot, it's almost like four ohms, or like almost no resistance. So really what this light is telling me is that the bike is up to operating temperatures. What I think I'll do is I'll wire the engine fault uh, light to that same cable with uh, a resistor on it. Uh, just so I know that if the uh, temperature of the bike gets way above like 240 Celsius, then I know the cooling's not working at all. Um, another thing that I want to check is I'm going to let the bike warm up a little bit more and uh, see if the fan turns on. Right now it isn't on, but uh, I'll wait for it to try to turn on. And uh, then I'm probably going to take it just for a ride around the parking lot. So let's uh, wait for it to warm up. Alright, let's go for a ride. Ugh. I got white smoke everywhere. I think it's from like oil that has dripped on things. And it's probably gonna stop at some point, but whatever. I think it right now it's warmed up, so it's actually sitting at right about the the stock RPM that it should be at. Uh, so I think we're really good. Choke is off. It it is still smoking, but I guess we'll have to wait for that to burn off. And. Uh, Oh, will it, will it die? So it does have a little bit of a finicky idle, but uh, it is working. Alright guys, so cooling is working. Uh, we have the bike uh, in operation. So 
or in operational state. Uh, I do. I will continue to use that light on the speedo uh, as a sensor for, I guess, when when we're starting to reach operating temperatures. Uh, and I'll probably wire in the engine uh, fault light to uh, the overheating, um, but that will be down the line. Uh, for now, the bike is pretty much done. Uh, I just need to get a license plate uh, holder, put on a license plate, get a light for it, and uh, it's ready for safety. So once the season is a little bit warmer, we'll definitely uh, get that uh, safety. And uh, pretty much it's ready to ride. Um, in terms of other things that I will do on this bike, uh, I'll probably look into uh, either reusing the old cover plates for these areas here and on the other side since not much has changed uh, and uh, I do want to do some adjustments in terms of the way the speedo sits so right now it's like very far so I'm thinking to cut these off to here and do a little notch so that I can mount this little adjustment button kind of under like so like right in the center uh, and then move the entire assembly essentially down. So these holes will be moved here. So this entire thing will just move down and nicely tuck away. And uh, yeah, so at this point it's pretty much good to go for riding. I forgot to mention that uh, I bought a uh, speedometer configurator, or speedometer signal configurator. Um, I'll make a video about that and how I'm gonna essentially change the signal from the speed sensor to the speedometer so that the speed actually makes sense because um, right now doing i'm roughly estimating that i'm when i'm doing 60 uh it shows 200 so i'll need to adjust that and uh that will be coming in a, a video very soon the product has already shipped uh and yeah so thanks for watching make sure to subscribe uh hit the little bell to get notifications when new videos become available Check me out on Instagram. Uh, make sure to check out uh, uh where I have articles uh, on uh, some of these videos as well as some of the tutorials, some cruises that I do, and various other things. So yeah, thanks for watching and see you next time.